the All Elite Podcast. The All Elite Podcast. Covering all the latest news and results from the AEW. In a minute. Sean Spears. Shot right to the side of the head of Cody. This is pro wrestling analysis as you've never heard before. Deathly Hollows! Might be it. One, two, three, just save it! Coming to you every single week. So without any further delay, let's go all in and get the show started right now. What is up, guys? Welcome to this week's edition of the All Elite Podcast right here on the WWE Podcast. I am your host, as always, Jeff Johnson. Hope you guys are having a great week. Hope you guys are are safe and um, safe and sound and you guys are staying home, staying, keeping your hands washed, all that good stuff. Uh, Before we get started um, with AEW Dynamite tonight, I do want to touch on a couple of quick news items that have popped up over the last couple of days. Uh, The first one is that AEW announced the start of the TNT Championship, and they're going to be doing a tournament starting next week to determine the first TNT champion. They've announced two matchups, the first one being Darby Allin versus Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears versus Cody, which, as you guys know, all four of those guys have had rivalries over the past couple of months, uh, especially Cody and Sean Spears, which is a rivalry that dates back to late last year that... I guess in a way kind of had kind of had an ending to it, but was kind of ended abruptly after the chair shot that that Sean Spears gave to Cody, as you guys hear in the intro. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good seeing those guys in the ring again together. And of course, I feel like Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara are gonna tear the house down. But with that being said, we're actually gonna be getting the rest of the bracket on tonight's episode of Dynamite. So I'm very, very excited, very interested to see who else is gonna be in this tournament. Uh, the other news thing I wanted to bring up is that as of the, as of today on April 1st, uh, the state of Florida has issued a stay-at-home order. And what that means is the government is saying for, I think, I could be wrong, but I think it's for 30 days. But pretty much everything that's going to involve any, any kind of workers or anything that's non-essential has to be shut down. So that does affect... The uh, that does affect NXT and it affects AEW. Uh, Tony Khan has said that he has a backup plan and they will be filming somewhere outside of Florida. So I, I hopefully this does not affect AEW, but it is possible that it could. That starting next week we they, they won't have epi- uh, live episodes of Dynamite. You know, cross your fingers, guys, that we do still get it. I know it's a very trying time right now. It's very difficult for a lot of people. But hopefully we keep getting uh, AEW Entertainment and, you know, hopefully we keep getting NXT also because both brands are putting on great shows. Um, you know, we have, we have a great uh, NXT review here on the, on the podcast as well, so you guys make sure you check that out too. But uh, it's kind of up in the air on exactly what's going to be going on. Me personally, I hope they record at the Hardy Compound, which is in North Carolina, which is uh, the home of Matt Hardy, of course. I think it would be awesome to see live uh, editions or even even pre-taped, even a day pre-taped uh, episodes of, of Dynamite Live from the Hardy Compound. That would be a lot of fun. And, of course, with the evil genius of Matt Hardy you know, having some influence, there could be some very, very interesting episodes. But as of right now, they are still planning on doing shows next week uh, and, and starting this TNT tournament for the first TNT champion. And I'll tell you guys, I wasn't big on the name – for the TNT championship at first because I was like, oh, it's kind of a kind of a sellout a little bit to the to the network. But a friend of mine brought up the fact that it's called the TNT championship on Dynamite. And I was like, oh, okay, that actually kind of makes sense. I kind of dig that a little bit. And from what I could tell, it's going to be the equivalent of a television championship you saw in WCW, ECW, stuff like that. So I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be cool to have that secondary title to be defended on dynamite because the world title obviously is the big title, but it's mostly only defended on the big pay-per-views. So it'd be cool to see the secondary title that's defended and probably not every single week, but more frequently on, on dynamite and, and probably even on dark too. I, I would see, I'd be, wouldn't be surprised if they did it on there too. So, um, 
So that's all the news I got for you guys. Uh, again, and before we get started, make sure you guys subscribe to the WWE Podcast on all of your podcasting platforms. Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you guys get your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe. Check out all the other hosts that have the shows here on this podcast. They do a, a great job. It's WrestleMania week. As you guys know, there's a crazy WrestleMania coming up this weekend. Um, Matt's been throwing out content left and right, getting you guys ready for the big show, which is a two-day event, Saturday and Sunday. So, um, you know, I, I do the AEW reviews, but I am a big WWE fan. I do follow everything, and I can't wait for WrestleMania this weekend just because it's it's something completely different than what we've gotten before. You know, it's it's a big question mark on what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing everything, what it's going to look like. It's going to be in an, empty, in, in an empty area, being at the Performance Center. So definitely not, not going to have that traditional WrestleMania-type feel. So definitely going to be a spectacle, definitely going to be something to check out, and to get you guys ready for it, the, the, the WWE podcast is going to be putting out stuff all week. So you guys, make sure you guys check it out. So that being said, guys, let's get to it. Let's get ready for this week's edition of AEW Dynamite. Dynamite begins with Tony Schiavone, Cody, and Pharaoh welcoming us to inside the arena. Right off the bat, they go ahead and tell us who the next half of the bracket is going to be in the TNT Championship Tournament. And the, the other two matchups are going to be Dustin Rhodes versus Kip Sabian and Lance Archer versus Colt Cabana. So that's going to be an awesome tournament. I'm looking forward to it. Um, all all eight of these guys are are great. And, you know, there's some interesting matchups in this because, as I mentioned earlier, with Cody and Sean Spears, with their history, Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen's well-documented. But on the other side, you have, you have Dustin Rhodes, who, of course, is Cody's brother going against Kip Sabian. And then Lance Archer against the undefeated Colt Cabana, which, you know, Archer will be making his debut on Dynamite tonight. But he's been targeting Cody since he got here, and Cody's on the other side of the bracket. If Cody can make a run to the finals, it is possible he could go up against either Dustin, his brother, or against Lance Archer. You know, we saw the amazing match that Cody and Dustin had at Double or Nothing last year, which was, in my opinion, the match of the year in any company. And, you know, could they run it back and do it again? Sure, you know, but I I feel like... I don't think they're going to go that direction, though, just my opinion. Because one thing that made that match so incredible also was the crowd. The crowd was was so hot for it. Their chants were perfect. All the respect for both guys, especially for Dustin. You know, the the, the entire thing worked out to be, to be perfect. And if they were to do this match in front of nobody in an empty arena, I just felt like I feel like it would lack that that extra thing that made it special back at Double or Nothing uh, 2019. So I'd be very, very surprised if they went with Cody and Dustin Rhodes. I could see them doing Cody and Lance Archer because, you know, we talked about how Lance Archer's really been targeting Cody since he got here. But looking at it, and if if I'm going to, you know, make a guess right now to to throw something out there, I'm going to say the final is going to be Darby Allin versus Lance Archer. And, you know, Darby Allin's going to play that underdog role and – you know, fight the giant Lance Archer, the undefeated guy that's come in here. And I think Cody will kind of have something to say about the about that final and will help Darby Allen get get the victory and become the first TNT champion. Just throwing that out there, that's just completely a fantasy booking guess. But I think that'd be really cool. And I think Darby Allen definitely deserves to be the first TNT champion. But all eight of these guys, I, I would be more than you know, more than okay personally to hold the title. So I'm I'm looking forward to the tournament. It begins next week. I guess they're going to do all quarterfinal matches next week, and then they'll move on. And then the final is supposed to be at Double or Nothing in in Las Vegas on Memorial Day weekend. So let's and hopefully that hopefully that show happens. I know it's still kind of up in the air. People are still wondering if Double or Nothing's going to happen, but they're doing this tournament pretty much expecting that show to happen. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a great be a great tournament, a great set of matches starting next week. All right, so in the arena, we get the arrival of of, uh, Trent from The Best Friends. He'll be taking on Kenny Omega. And, guys, this was a hot, hot opener. This match was very, very fun, very back and forth. And, you know, we've seen Trent in some big matches before. We saw him in some one-on-one matches against the Lucha Bros. We got victories over both of them. And then now he's facing Kenny Omega. But to me, I feel like this was the coming out party for Trent. This He looked incredible in this match. You know, he's only 33 years old. He's in the prime of his career. I, I love the Best Friends. They're one of my favorite tag teams. They're, they definitely have my favorite theme song. I love the Best Friends theme song. But I feel like Trent has a huge singles run in him. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, that would kind of leave 
uh, Chuck Taylor behind, but you know they could do Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy if they wanted to do that. You know, very similar to kind of what SCU did last year with Scorpio Sky kind of taking that singles role. I'd love to see Trent take that role because he is he's great in the rings, had a great look, and he and Kenny Omega went back and forth for 19 minutes. Uh, Kenny ended up getting the win with the one wing and Angel as the as as Dasha, the ring announcer, announced there was one minute left to go in the 20 minute time limit. And this match was was so much fun, guys. It was a great, great hot opener. And this this two weeks in a row that Kenny Omega has put on a show that just, just gained my attention, that I just could sit there and watch it and be completely invested that you don't even notice there's nobody in the crowd. There's a couple of wrestlers in the crowd you know, just saying that, that I'm really happy they went back to doing that this week. I think we had the, the gun club there. Then we had, um, I think I saw Jimmy Havoc out there. Sammy Guevara was out there. there you know, there's a couple of guys kind of sporadic, sporadically placed around the crowd. So, and so it's cool to, to kind of hear them, but all the focus was in the ring for this match. It was super back and forth, awesome match. Both guys had a great showing. There was one spot that was kind of scary towards the end of the match, though. Uh, Kenny went up top. I guess he's going to go for a moonsault or something. Trent jumped up behind him, and Trent went for a for a top rope German suplex. And when he went to release, when he went to start it, his foot slipped off the rope, and he kind of tossed Kenny across the ring. And when he did, Kenny landed very high on the back of his head and on his neck. It was kind of a scary spot. It, it made me kind of cringe a little bit. But, um, you know, referee Aubrey Edwards went and checked on him. Looked like he was okay. Um, you know, my, he might have a little stinger, but he's able to finish the match. And it was a great match. So uh, this is definitely one, guys, if you have not seen this match yet, go back and watch it. Like I said, it's, it's 19 minutes, and it's great action from start from start to end. So definitely a hot, hot opener to start Dynamite this week. Next on the docket, we got an awesome video package highlighting the feud between Jake Hager and AEW World Champion John Moxley. I know normally we don't talk about video packages on the show, but this one was really, really good. One of the better ones that I've seen AEW put together. It, it highlighted uh, Hager's career, everything that uh, that Moxley's done since coming into AEW, winning the title from Jericho at Revolution, and it, it interviewed both guys. Jericho interviewed, uh, Sammy Guevara interviewed a couple times. It, it was it was awesome, and it showed that that these guys are ready to put on an awesome, awesome match. Um, you know, and Moxley, I, I liked a lot of stuff that Moxley said because he really put Hager over. He talked about how he's six foot four, two hundred and sixty pounds. He's built built like a semi, I think is what he said. But he also made it known that Jake Hager is human. And that he has an Achilles heel, that everybody has one, and he will find it, and he will exploit it. And it shows that Moxley's taken a different approach to this match than he does in other matches. Because Moxley is usually the guy that that uses his his offense and uses you know his pain tolerance and stuff like that to get through his matches. But he knows he has to go a different direction with Jake Hager. And I love the booking with this because it's making it's making Hager look like this unstoppable monster in, in his own right. Where, you know, he's undefeated in Bellator and, and undefeated in, in AEW. And it it really took this feud to the next level. And Jericho did a great job of, of putting Hager over also and saying that, you know, there is no there will be no animosity from him if Hager wins the title because you know, if the because the inner circle is together, and the inner circle they don't fight within each other like the elite. They don't hit each other with their own signature moves. That the inner circle works together, and if one person's champion, they're all a champion. So, you know, I I love this booking because they can go so many different directions with this. Is Jericho telling the truth? You know, it, will there be animosity if Hager wins the title? And you know this. The way they booked Hager in general, like I said, by making him look like that he could win this match easily against Jake Hager. And they did announce this. This was the big news coming out of this this video package is that this match is official and it is going to happen, but it's not going to happen at double or nothing like I originally thought it was. This match is happening in two weeks in a no holds barred empty arena match on Dynamite. So you know, I talked I talked about a little bit earlier about how I, w- I wanted to see Hikaru Shida and Nyla Rose have a women's championship match. That I want to see certain AEW titles be defended on Dynamite. Well, we got it, and it's going to be the AEW World Championship in two weeks between Jake Hager and John Moxley. 
This is a massive, massive match. This is going to be one of the biggest matches in AEW history. It'll be the first time, if I'm not mistaken, the first time the AEW Championship has been defended on Dynamite. Um, I, I don't, I can't remember. I could be wrong if Jericho. Oh no, I'm sorry. Jericho defended the title against um, Scorpio Sky. That's right. Uh, but it'll be it'll be John Moxley's first uh, title defense on on Dynamite. So. This is a huge match, and I've, I've went on record saying the last couple of weeks, it would not surprise me if Jake Hager won this title. And I know I know Moxley has not had the title long, and some people are going to think that's crazy, but I think there's a bigger picture here. I really do. Moxley has been a decent champion, and if you guys have seen what I've posted on Twitter, I'm very boisterous about John Moxley, about how I, how I feel about him. And – but – he has been a good champion, but I feel like him being the hunter is the better way for him to go because he's a wild card. You know, nobody knows what he's going to do. He could attack anybody anytime. He kind of goes to the beat of his own drum. And if you're the guy that's chasing the title, I think, I, I think having that attitude works a lot better. That's why in my opinion, Moxley and Jericho was so good because Jericho was the cocky heel, the, you know, the Le champion, but Moxley was that crazy guy that would attack Jericho out of nowhere. You never know when he's going to show up, and he picked his spots uh, to, to end up getting the title. So if you put this title on an undefeated Jake Hager and have Moxley chase him, whether it be to double or nothing or even afterwards, I, I think I think it would be it would be a great feud. It would be a great way to book this. And me personally, I hope that's what they do. Would it surprise me if Moxley ra- maintained the title? Not at all. Because he is a huge star, he did just get the title recently. I, I it wouldn't surprise me either way. It, it really wouldn't. But I know if I was booking AEW, I would I would put a shock factor out there. I would get people talking, and I would have Jake Hager take this title from Moxley and be the guy where everybody's going. Well, who's going to beat him? You know, Jericho. You you could make you could make the case. Okay, Jericho's almost fifty years old. You know, Jericho's not the prime of his career anymore. But he had the inner circle behind him, but he couldn't quite get the job done. Jake Hager's in his prime. I know, well, Jake Hager's a little bit older, but he's still in his physical prime. He's still fighting in combat sports. And you put this title on him with the, the support of the inner circle, there's nobody that's going to touch this guy. And that's I think that's the best way. That's always been my favorite way to book a heel champion. Reminds me of back when Triple H was the champion back in the, the early 2000s, late 90s in WWE, where... He was just he was unbeatable, and he had that title, and he would just destroy people. But then when he lost, it was such a big deal, and it really put over new talent. So you get Jake Hager to have a good run with this title, and you bring somebody like, like a new talent. I mean, like like a Darby Allen or like 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 a Luchasaurus. If you get one of those guys to be the one to finally knock off Hager sometime down the road, you have an instant star. And you know, I know I'm going into a long detail about this, and I know we have some we have time over the next two weeks to talk about it. But there's there's a lot of different directions to go here. I, I really think there is. And another name that I would throw in there too potentially is Sammy Guevara. I know Guevara is in the inner circle, but if they do this thing where you start some animosity between them, especially with Jericho saying so many times we're on the same page, you know, there's there's no issues between us, and, you, and I feel like those could be planting some seeds where there could start being some animosity, especially when blood and guts finally comes around. And, you know, that's when you could start seeing it be put in motion. So I I like it. I I like this a lot. I'm looking forward to the match. It's going to be a huge match. And we'll talk, you know, we'll talk about it more next week. We'll talk about it more the night of the show, but get ready guys. Two weeks from now, it's going to be a big one. Jake Hager, John Moxley, AEW championship, no holds barred, empty arena match. Up next, we got the debuting Murder Hawk monster Lance Archer taking on poor Marco Stunt, and uh, yeah, this match went about how you guys would expect it would. Uh, this was a complete dominant showing by Lance Archer. He's he's an animal. Like he, this dude is massive. Uh, for those of you that that haven't seen this guy perform before, he's the former Lance Hoyt in TNA. He had a great run there. Uh, went over to New Japan. Has been there for the last, I don't know, about 10 years or so. Been there for a long time. Really, you know, 
re reimagined and redeveloped himself into this murder hawk gimmick and I mean, he, this guy, he, this guy's, he's a bad dude. He is a bad dude. And he showed it tonight. When he came out, the first thing he did was walk around the ring. And I think he attacked one of the tech guys, like, like just knocked one of the tech guys out pretty much and was jawing at, at the wrestlers at ringside and got in the ring and just completely destroyed poor Marco Stunt. Stunt was able to get a little bit of offense in about halfway through the match, but it, it, it wasn't much. This was just, a complete showcase for Lance Archer. He was throwing Marco completely around the ring. He hit a he hit a release suplex where he started in one corner and threw Marco over his head completely to the other corner. And it was it was brutal. Hit a massive choke slam. Uh, went for the pinfall but picked Marco up and then hit his finisher. Which I, I apologize that the name of the finisher is escaping me right now, but. In a way, it's it sets up kind of like kind of like a reverse outsider's edge, where instead of being back to back, it's you know the the opponent is lifted by his arms with with their front to his back, and then he flips him over in, in, into a slam. It's really impressive, really impressive looking move. Be kind of hard to do on a real big guy, but somebody like Marco Stunt, he can do he can do it too. And then he's. A massive, you know, massive strong guy, so he could do it to a lot of a lot of people. But he ends up getting the victory, and then after the match, he's jawed with the Gun Club at ringside. And right before he leaves, he runs back in the ring, grabs Marco Stunt, stands on the apron, and the best way I can describe this is he picks Marco up for a choke slam, but instead of slamming him to the ground, he throws him over the barricade into the Gun Club and knocks down both both guys of the Gun Club. So he pretty much just tossed Marco by his throat. <laughs> I don't know, a good ten feet, probably in, into these guys standing in the crowd. It was it was crazy, and I know Marco's you know a buck a buck oh five soaking wet, but it was still a really crazy spot, very dangerous spot to see. Reminded me of back when the ECW ECW days when Bam Bam Bigelow threw Spike Dudley into the crowd. It was very similar to that. He gave me some flashbacks with that, but this was a great, um, great debut in, for for Lance Archer. He looked absolutely incredible, and Cole Cabana was on on commentary during this. And Archer spent a lot of the match kind of jawing at Colt, and Colt was retaliating in the way that Colt does. But that's going to be a big match next week in the in the quarterfinals of the TNT tournament between these two. You know, because Colts undefeated, Colts looked really impressive so far. But Lance Archer is just—he's—he's he's a monster. It's in his name, and that's exactly what he is. I, I have Lance Archer going a long way in this tournament, so I would be—I would be surprised if Colt won that match next week. Yeah, I—it would—it would surprise me. It would surprise me a lot. So I think Lance Archer is going to win. But this was a great showing for him. He's. He's got a very, very bright future in, in AEW. He is a little bit older. I mean, he's, he's almost in his 40s, so he's been around for a while. But, I mean, he's still in phenomenal shape. He moves around great. He's he's going to be here for a long time. He's a future world champion. It, there's no doubt about it. All right, so after this, we got a uh, another video package showing uh, the exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee McMahon. Oh, Brody Lee. My apologies. And he is in a conference room with a couple of members of the of the Dark Order. Uh, no sign of Evil Udo or Stu Grayson. But uh, Brody Lee was talking about how he's leading by example, and you know, he asked one of the one of the members to stand up and and repeat what what he had said about you know like like that the, the, the they are one. What their their catchphrase is. And it was kind of there was kind of a funny spot in this where Brody's like, My name is Mr. Brody Lee and the members called him Mr. Mr. Lee and Brody said that's not right. And then the guy called him the exalted one and Brody got mad, threw his glass of I guess it was some kind of whiskey or something, against the uh against the wall and shattered it. And then he told this man to say what he told him to say, and the guy just kinda I guess he, he seemed kind of scared. He just kind of put his hand up and said, we are one. And that wasn't good enough for Brody Lee. Brody Lee stood up and, and yelled, we are one. He's like, that's how it's supposed to be said and told the guy to leave. Well, he looks over to another member and the guy starts yawning. Very similar to the guy that sneezed last week. And Brody Lee sat down next to him and just very calmly asked him, 
what is 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 there something going on at home and just acting kind of sympathetic just in a very very sarcastic way and he told the guy never to yawn in front of him again that yawning shows weakness and told him to leave this we talked about this last week this is a complete parody of vince mcmahon and it's even more apparent this week because these are all stories we've heard of vince mcmahon the sneezing the yawning you know calling him certain things, not knowing what to call him in certain situations. These are all different things about Vince McMahon. I, I don't feel really any different about it this week as I did last week. Last week I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought it was okay. I still kind of feel the same way. I, I don't know if this is the way that I would go personally with Brody Lee. I was I guess I was expecting more of a dark character, you know, very mysterious, maybe a little bit like Ministry of Darkness Undertaker, just to kind of throw an example out there. That's more kind of what I was looking for, what I was expecting. Maybe maybe I'm, the reason I'm not super high on this is because this is completely a 180 on what I was expecting. It's not bad. I, I don't think this is something that's horrible. And and I mean, and it is Brody Lee being used, which we've all wanted as Brody Lee, Luke Harper fans for the last eight years. We've wanted something something for this guy to do and, and to be produ- you know, to be used. And that's what he's getting. And that's what he's getting in AEW. And he's able to have his own platform and be the leader of something because he's a great talker. He's got a great look. He's very good in the ring. I just, I don't know how I feel about this Vince McMahon, this Vince McMahon-esque character. It's, I'm not on board yet. And normally I'm the, I'm the kind of guy that gives the benefit of the doubt, especially with AEW. Yes, I'm an AEW homer. It, it happens. But, Playing a character that is a blatant ripoff of arguably the biggest name in the history of wrestling, you know, definitely the biggest promoter in the history of wrestling, one of the most important people in the history of wrestling, I I don't know. I, I don't know how exactly I feel about it yet. It's going to take a little more time for me to, to figure out what I think. I'm not a big fan of it yet. And I do think it's a little petty on AEW's part in a way to do this. And I'm sure a lot of this is Brody Lee's idea because of everything that he went through. And we heard the interview with him, or some of y'all did, with him on Chris Jericho's podcast. And he talked about a lot of this stuff and the, the McMahonisms and the certain things that he does. And I've never been a fan of AEW taking pot shots at WWE. I understand there's some sour grapes there, especially with Cody and some other people like that, Brody Lee. But I just I don't think taking shots at WWE is the right way to go. You know, be your own company. There's good things going on in this company by being different, by being your own entity. And it just it, whenever they take these shots at WWE, it makes you remember, oh yeah, these guys are new. You know, this is a new company. This is a company that's not Raw or SmackDown yet. Yes, the yes the product is good. The in ring stuff is good, but I mean they're nowhere near the WWE level, especially when it comes to to what they mean in pop culture. And, you know, by them taking these shots, it just, it kind of, it kind of, me personally, it reminds me of that. It shows me that, that, you know, they're going to make fun of WWE and, and poke fun at Vince McMahon. And I don't know, I'm going on a tirade about it. And I, I'll give it more time. It is, don't get me wrong. It is entertaining. And I thought some of it was pretty funny just as a whole. I want to, I want him to change something. I want him to pivot away a little bit. If, if you, they, they still want to make him this, this leader that leads by example, even in a corporate type role, if you want to do that, because he is wearing the suits and the hair, you know, tied back, stuff like that. That's fine. I got no problem with that, but let Brody Lee be Brody Lee. Let him be his own character. You know, don't let him be Vince McMahon because that's, that's going to pigeonhole him the way he was pigeonholed as Luke Harper and the Wyatt family. Only, in a different way. And I don't think that's a good thing. I, I don't think that's a good thing at all. So am I being too critical? Possibly. But that is the way I feel about it. I'll give it more time. I want to see him in the ring more. I want to see him interact with the rest of the Dark Order more. I want to see more between him evil, him and Evil Uno for sure. Because Evil Uno was the one that hyped him up. That really you know, made the Exalted One know. That really got our suspicions up. But we haven't seen really interact any interaction between the two besides the night Brody Lee debuted and they attacked SCU. That's really the only thing we've seen. So there's still a long way to go with this. I'm, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to give it a shot. 
and maybe I'll get on board soon. You know what? I wasn't a fan of the Dark Order when they debuted, but they did some stuff that made me a fan of theirs. So, hey, maybe this will be the same way. Speaking of the Dark Order, they are in action up next, but it's not Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. It is actually members number eight and number nine is what they were called of the Dark Order. Taking on the team of Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, who are now collectively known as the Nightmare, the Natural Nightmares. I'm sorry, the Natural Nightmares. And, um, you know, this was, this was a fun little match. This was pretty much a show that there's another good tag team in AEW. And and that is unfortunately not eight and nine, but it is the natural nightmares. I thought uh, QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes had a lot of good chemistry together. Uh, this was pretty much a a pretty dominant win for them. It went just a couple of minutes. Uh, eight and nine got a little bit of offense, and they were a couple. They were two masked guys. You couldn't tell who they were. Um, eight was the taller one. Nine was the shorter one. But this was pretty much just a match to 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 highlight the natural nightmares. I thought QT Marshall looked really good in this one. I know he's been a little up and down at times. He's had some decent matches, but you know he hasn't won a whole lot. But it was good to see him get, get in the uh, in the win column here. Uh, after afterwards, they, they kind of celebrated for a while. Uh, the natural nightmares did. Oh, by uh, by the way, they they did hit a very impressive finisher where. I'm trying to think like Dustin Dustin picked up number nine, I think it was. QT Marshall hit the ropes and ended up hitting like a fallaway cutter in a way out of it. it. It's really hard to explain. It's something you guys are gonna have to go back and watch, but it was a pretty it was a pretty sick finisher though. I really enjoyed it. And then after the match, the uh Dustin and QT celebrated, and the celebration went on for a while. Like for a couple of minutes, and even got to where um Tony Schiavone and now Colt Cabana, who's doing commentary kind of ran out of things to say and then finally Cabana's like oh yeah uh dumb and dumber coming on after AEW Dynamite so they were trying to fill a little bit of time and then all of a sudden the music of the exalted one Brody Lee hits Brody Lee walks out does a quick kind of stare down with Dustin Rhodes which was very interesting kind of piqued my interest a little bit of a match that I'd love to see down the road between these two guys they're both very similar in size and then Brody just kind of turns from him walks in the ring Grabs number nine, hits a brutal power bomb on number nine, stares down eight, and leaves the ring. You know, leading by example is exactly the message that Brody Lee's trying to give. So, yeah, this this segment was it was fun. It was a fun segment. You know, not a whole lot to it, uh, but it's just another way another way of showing that Brody Lee is going to lead by example, and he's going to be that guy that's going to run the Dark Order his way. So, you know. I went into detail a few minutes ago about how I feel exactly about the character, but in ring, I'm, I'm all for some Brody Lee. Like I, I'm totally on board with him. He's, he's so much fun to watch. So, Hey, if he comes out, he's doing stuff like this, lead by example, physically by attacking other members to, to toughen him up. Hey, I'm, I'm all for that. I think that's going to be, I think that that's a cool way to do it. So yeah, good segment all around. After this, we got a little bit of update on what's going to be going on in the next couple of weeks. Uh, originally, I had thought that they were going to be doing all four quarterfinal matches next week on Dynamite, but they're actually only going to be doing two of them. They're going to be doing uh, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, and Cody versus Sean Spears. And the other two matches will be in two weeks, the same week that we'll be getting the Jake Hager versus uh, John Moxley match. Um, so a little bit of an update on, uh, on the next couple of cards coming up in the next couple of weeks. But, uh, right after this, we got a video package of the young bucks. Uh, Matt had went over to Nick Jackson's house to get an update on him. Actually brought a ring with them and put him, put it in the middle of their tennis court that they have, that they have, uh, in their backyard. And it was pretty much an update on Nick. And it was a very serious promo, very serious video package because, you know, normally we see, the jovial side of these guys, especially through being the elite and stuff like that. But this was very serious. And this was Nick talking about how, you know, he has no memory of, of who attacked him. He doesn't remember being in an ambulance and that, you know, he's fighting for his livelihood. You know, he wants to come back, but, you know, he's not quite ready yet. And there was one, there's one moment that really stood out to me is that the camera showed the guys in the ring, but it was kind of far off. But, in the foreground was Nick's family. It was his, it was his wife and his three children, you know, and the camera was behind their back. They were sitting there watching him as, as both Nick and, and, and Matt uh, wrestled in the ring. So 
it's definitely giving a much more personal aspect for Nick Jackson, which is is really cool, and I really like it that that they're you know really playing this off. And um, afterwards, Nick and Matt are walking together, and Matt asked Nick how he felt, and he said he felt good. And he asked Nick if he was ready, and Nick looked at him and said, "Not yet." So they're still slow playing this. Um, it and it's gonna. I love this because it's gonna make it a big deal when Nick comes back, and. I would say he's going to be back in blood and guts, but I don't know. We don't know when it's going to be though. You know, it could be a couple months from now. And obviously, I think Nick will be back by then. So they are slow playing, and I think it's going to happen in a moment when the elite really needs Nick the most. And it could be something involving Hangman because we've seen the history between the Young Bucks and Hangman Page, especially the more recent history. And it could be a moment where Nick does something to save Hangman. And really kind of gets that bond together with the elite. And I think Nick's going to end up being that glue that brings the elite together to face the inner circle. So this was really good. If you guys get a chance, go back and watch this video package. It's only a couple minutes long, but it's very, very well done. And like I said, it's a different side of the Young Bucks than you normally see. Because normally they're the fun-loving, jovial, joking around type guys. But this was serious from the beginning. So... Definitely a different side of the Young Bucks, so check it out if you haven't seen it yet. So before we get into the main event, i gotta, I got to take a step back real quick and uh, cover a segment that I accidentally skipped over while doing the review. Uh, before the, the most previous segment, we had a video package that showed Chris Jericho at his home in his hot tub uh, cutting a promo talking about the Elite and just kind of running down each one one by one. Um, you know, just taking some pot shots at each guy individually. And as he's sitting there talking about it, it kept, keeps cutting away and showing Vanguard 1, Matt Hardy's drone, approaching the, the, the Jericho compound. Or as it said on the on the drone itself, Le Castle of Le Champion, <laughs> which, is, which is really funny. I really, I really kind of popped for that. But um, the drone ends up getting to Jericho. And just like last week, Jericho cuts a promo on the drone asking it to join the inner circle and the drone flies away. And as he's flying away, Jericho says, release the hounds and all of Jericho's pretty much all small dogs run out and start barking at, at Vanguard one as he's flying away. And then it has a shot of Vanguard flying over a lake as Jericho's running out on a pier yelling at it. And it was, (laughs) it was, it was, it was ridiculous. It was. This whole thing, this whole feud between Matt Hardy and Jericho is ridiculous. But it's so much fun, though. And it was very similar in a, in a big-time continuation of what happened between Jericho and Matt Hardy last week on Dynamite. This, and I, I'm gonna, I'm probably going to say this every single week, but I'm going to reiterate each time that you guys have got to be open-minded with this. If you, if you can stay open-minded, this is great. This is very, very entertaining. If you guys are serious you know, hardcore wrestling fans or whatever. Yeah, this probably isn't going to be for you. But if you guys, like I said, keep an open mind and want to be entertained, this this stuff is gold. And Chris Jericho, again, shows every single week why he is one of the best in the world. Not just in the ring, but his character and his the way he cuts promos just as a complete pro wrestler and everything that he does. To be able to cut a promo on a drone. And, you know, yes, it was pre-taped, but I'm pretty sure that didn't take Jericho many... Many takes, if more than one take, just because Chris Jericho is so good. So this was really entertaining. I I liked it a lot. It was very funny. And this this whole feud between Jericho and and Matt Hardy is just going to keep getting more weird and more weird every single week. And I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. So let's get into the main event, guys. The main event this week is the team of Cody and Darby Allin taking on uh, Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara. And uh, this was this was a really fun match. Uh, this is kind of a, a preview to get us ready for the uh, the TNT tournament starting next week. Uh, all four of these guys will be in individual matches with Darby Allen going against Sammy Guevara and Cody going against Sean Spears. And this match was very back and forth. Uh, all four guys had great shiny moments in this. There was a spot that was pretty funny when Sammy Guevara was in the or no, I'm sorry, uh, Sean Spears was in the ring with Darby Allen. And Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara make a bet if if Sean Spears can do a stalling suplex for 10 seconds. And he does it, and then Sammy throws a double or nothing bet that he can do it for 15 seconds. So Sammy gets in the ring, does a stalling suplex on Darby for 15 seconds. Well, not to be outdone, Sean Spears says, okay, I'm all in, everything I have, that I can do it for 20 seconds. 
and Sammy Sammy accepts it. Sean gets back in the ring. Sean goes to suplex Darby, and Darby rolls him up, and they have a little a little exchange. And as this exchange is going on, Sammy just slowly like crawls in the ring, grabs the money, and sticks it into his tights. Um I thought this was this was hilarious. I thought it was really funny. And the fact that there's no crowd, you can you can really like you can hear what they're saying. You can really, you know, get involved with with these guys. So this is a really funny spot. And I enjoyed it. Uh, everything really picked up towards the end of the match. Uh, everybody started hitting their signature spots, but the main spot that really stood out to me was that uh, Sean Spears and Darby, or I'm sorry, Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara were on the outside, and Darby Allen had shimmied up this pole, and they look up and and Darby hits a coffin drop from this pole and drops both guys. And it was, it was very, very impressive. I liked it. And he was pretty high up too. Uh, so it was a really cool visual to see. Um, say or Darby ends up rolling Sean back in the ring. Darby goes for a coffin drop. Sammy cuts him off. And after another exchange, Sammy distracts Darby while Sean Spears rolls him up from behind and gets the victory, which to me was pretty shocking because Sean Spears, Really, you know, he hasn't won a lot lately. And Darby Allen's been on fire. He's been on a roll, and as has as has Cody. So this is a really big win for for Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara, and it gives them a lot of momentum heading into the the singles matches next week. Um, I think it's a good idea too because of how much momentum that Darby and and Cody have had. They're going to be the favorites heading into those matches. And to my, in my opinion, they're still going to be the favorites heading in, but at least by giving the victory to Sean Spears and, and to Sammy Guevara, you at least put a little more doubt in your mind that, Hey, you know, maybe these guys can get it done. You know, maybe these guys can move on. Um, as for my predictions for next week, I do think Cody and Darby are going to move on, especially with what happened after the match. Uh, Darby was frustrated about getting rolled up and Cody tried to, uh, to, uh, to, to help him up. Well, Darby gets up and decks Cody in the face and knocks Cody down. And then he just leaves the ring as the show goes off the air. So uh, Darby showed that he doesn't want any compassion. He wants he's, he goes to the beat of his own drum. He's going to do what he wants to do. And, you know, he doesn't need Cody's, Cody's sympathy. So I, I like this. This was this was really good. It shows that Darby Allen, Darby Allen's a main eventer. He is, he's in that spot. And Cole Cabana said as much during, during this match. So um, I, I like it. And by, by – Darby Allen getting physical with Cody. It really makes me think that that's the match we're going to see in the semi in the semifinals. So personally, I do expect Kobe and Darby to move on next week, but both matches are going to be a lot of fun, especially Darby and, and Sammy. Cause we've seen what those two guys do in the past and they're, they're both incredible. So I expect that to, to be an awesome match overall guys. I thought this was a really good episode of dynamite. Uh, you know, I mentioned I mentioned earlier how there you know there's not a lot of storyline continuation, but they did a good job with it this week. Uh, you know we got some continuation between Jericho and Matt Hardy. Uh, the the TNT tournament guys are getting ready for uh, Hikaru Shida moving closer to a women's title match, and of course the big announcement you know with um, the AEW World Title match in two weeks. The video package between Moxley and and uh, and Hager was was incredible. It was so good. So make sure you guys go back and check that out if you didn't. So overall, you know, thumbs up AW Dynamite for me, guys. Uh, really enjoyed it. I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking sticking with me through this this week. It was a very very good episode. And so make sure you guys check it out if you haven't you guys haven't got a chance to watch it yet. Uh, remember, guys, you guys can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Run with Turtles. You guys, are, you know, I'm easy to get a hold of. If you guys want to message me, talk to me. We can talk AEW. We can talk WWE. Um, I'm a big gamer as well. You know, if you guys want to talk games, I game stream too. So, hey, whatever you guys want to talk about, hit me up. I'm easy to get a hold of. Just, you know, hit me up on Twitter. We'll, we'll talk about whatever. So, until next week, guys, I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you guys then. Enjoy WrestleMania this weekend.